your speech. Now, all of us are Toastmasters, and so we all have the opportunity to give up and give speeches. And one thing is giving a speech at a club that we belong to. Another is to give a competition speech outside of our club. And I remember my first time I was giving a competition speech outside of a club, although this is not really true. I was meeting my friend at a restaurant. His name was Tim. And I arrived at the restaurant, and the first thing that happened uh, is he called me and let me know that he was unable to give me a ride to his club for the competition speech. And I was already nervous speaking outside my club because I've actually never spoken outside my club before. So the next thing I know, I'm sitting down and I decided to go ahead and order a mushroom salad. So I sit down and this sort of Yahoo looking guy sits up, comes and sits up next to me and starts talking and I sort of ignored him. And I ordered a mushroom salad. And the next thing I know, the Yahoo next to me said, hey, do you want some magic mushrooms for that salad? And I said, of course I don't want it. I don't do drugs. I'm a Toastmaster, you know. I have an important speech to give tonight. And, you know, and I maybe might have called him a loser. So I get up and I go to the restroom and I come back about five minutes later and my salad's there with a whopping amount of mushrooms on my salad. And the next thing I know, the gentleman's leaving the door and he said, have a nice speech. Yeah, uh, I'm glad I was able to help. Just some constructive criticism, that's all. So I'm eating my salad, and the next thing you know, I start feeling a little funny. Things are changing colors, and suddenly I could hear the conversations on the tables next to me very clearly. Ah, and being a Toastmaster, I thought, well, I should help them out. So I grabbed my handy-dandy buzzer, and I walked over to the table, and I could hear them saying things like, um, and ah, and so, and unnecessarily long pauses. So I was just there to help out a little bit. So, And I walk over to the next table. Rednecks. And then I walked over to the next table. Rappers. And the next thing I know, the, the manager walks up and he says, Sir, um, if you don't leave and stop this right now, I'm going to call the police. So he said, um. So the next thing I know, the police walk in. And my friend called me and he said, two of his friends are going to walk in and they're going to take me to the club. So you know, the, I'm thinking, well, these might be the two people. And the police officer walks up to me and he says, Sir, you're causing a disturbance. And I talked to him for a moment, and he said, actually, I believe that you might be under the influence of a controlled substance. And when he said it, his face went like, wah, wah, wah. And I said, no, I'm not, but that was pretty cool. Can you do that again? So I told him about being a Toastmaster and that I was going to give a speech tonight, and, it, and I was going to be giving his, this important speech. And he said, well, maybe you should go tell the judge. Well, that's the whole idea. It's a competition. So he said, come with us. <laughs> so I get in the car, and how often do you get to go to a Toastmasters club? And I get to ride in the back of a police car. I even got to wear the handcuffs. This is pretty cool. So we show up at this, this club that they have. There's all these stairs and these big pillars. And the officer told me, he said, when you go in there, they're going to call your name. When they call your name, step up. So it's OK. I know how this works. So I see the podium. I see the microphone. And, this club takes it very seriously. The judge really had on a robe. It was a little overdoing it. The sergeant at arms really had a badge and a gun and a taser. So I'm sitting there. I'm all nervous. They took the handcuffs off. They called my name. And I walked up to the podium. And I began giving my speech. And rudely enough, they started interrupting me. And then the sergeant at arms stood up. And he actually grabbed my arm. And, and I stopped for a moment. But then I continued with my speech. The next thing I know, he tases me. <laughs> Like, wow, we need one of these in our clubs. We just have a buzzer. Boy, this will take. I don't even know if I said um or ah. I don't remember anything. <laughs> so everything's going okay. I begin giving my speech again, and the next thing I know, the judge tells me that uh, apparently I'm not prepared today, and he wants me to come back tomorrow. So first, I'm just thinking this is really bad. I'm nervous. I, I must have failed. I don't know what happened, and but I get another chance. So they took me, and they were taking me away, and they said, we're going to spend the night. So I walk away, I'm thinking, first of all, I don't have anything to wear. I'll come back in the morning and get another chance at the speech, but what am I going to do? So they take me back, and first thing they do is they take my picture. There's all these other Toastmasters with me. I'm thinking, this is going to be great, a Toastmaster sleepover, and we're going to talk all night. So the next, then, unfortunately, they, they gave me some orange pajamas, so I put my pajamas on, and Next thing we know, we're walking out into this room, and this is a terrible hotel, obviously a bad neighborhood, bars everywhere on everything. 
they put me into my room, I lay down, and I get up because I wanted to get a drink. And I walk over to the door, and the door's locked. So I'm banging on the door. I said, hey, my door's locked. And all the other Toastmasters say, hey, mine's locked too. And they're all laughing at me. So finally, I did come to my senses, and I understood what happened. That Yahoo put some magic mushrooms in my cell. So I went to bed, and the next morning, the judge, I went to the judge again, and I realized what happened. I wasn't there to give a speech this time. And the judge told me that, that next time I need to be in more in control of my surroundings, and I have to be careful what I ingest, and uh, that they were going to let me go this time. Then he went on and on and on. I don't really remember what he said. I wasn't paying attention. And, and they said, so what do you have to say? I said, well, you had two ahs, three ums, two unnecessary pauses. <laughs> I can't help it. I'm a Toastmaster, you know. 